Sleep tight, but keep one eye open. This is Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi. Alec Murdoch. <laughs> Need I say more? Alec Murdoch. He's uh, he's back, and the likelihood of him getting a new murder trial. Uh, if I were a betting man, I would say it's pretty fucking good at this point. The South Carolina Supreme Court has agreed to hear an appeal from disgraced former attorney Alec Murdoch, who's currently serving a life sentence without parole for the murders of his wife and son. The appeal centers on allegations of jury tampering during Murdoch's murder trial, where his defense claims the court clerk, Becky Hill, improperly influenced the jury, which is one juror that says, yeah, without a doubt, she did. Murdoch, nearly three years into his sentence, is also appealing a 40-year federal prison sentence for financial crimes after pleading guilty to stealing nearly $11 million from his clients and law firm. His defense argues that a sentence, which is 10 years longer than federal guidelines recommend, is excessive and unconstitutional. It's, just, it's weird to appeal a sentence that you pled guilty to. Yeah, that does have a, a weird buyer's remorse kind of feel to it. I think he's trying to play the long game here. He's hoping that if he gets a second murder trial, he'll be uh, acquitted. And if he can shave 10 years off the 30-year sentence, maybe he'll get out at about 80. <sighs> get out to what? He's got nothing left. Get out to go, you know, scam more people because that's all he knows how to do. The jury tampering allegations are pivotal in Murdoch's state court appeal. Murdoch's lawyers contend that uh, Colleton County Clerk of Court Becky Hill improperly told jurors not to trust Murdoch's testimony, had private discussions with the jury foreperson, and pressured the jury to reach a quick verdict, which she did. She didn't let him go for a smoke break. She didn't let him. It was that was a quick verdict for. The, yeah, for the level and intensity of that trial, uh, although it, it did look pretty damning. And but again, a lot of the evidence against him is very circumstantial in terms of the murders themselves. There was the financial crimes that I think sunk him more than anything, which may not be brought into a second case. Hill resigned amid an ethics investigation following the claims. Murdoch's defense argues that this misconduct influenced the jury's decision which is warranting a new trial. Judge Gene Toll, a retired South Carolina Supreme Court chief justice assigned to the case, emphasized that overturning a verdict on the grounds of jury tampering requires proving that a juror changed their mind due to improper influence. However, Murdoch's defense cites a federal standard suggesting that the potential to influence, ju to influence jurors should be enough to overturn the conviction. The South Carolina Supreme Court has given Murdoch's legal team now 30 days to submit further arguments, but no date has been set yet for the hearing, which is going to happen at some point in time. Here's the deal, though, with this. A juror, a single one, came out and said, yes, this influenced my decision. Many others have said, including some that are represented by Eric Bland, uh, they never heard her say any of this. But again, you're talking about 12 different people here. Mm -hmm. And Becky Hill's kind of a little chatty Kathy. And... I could very easily see it being that she just, you know, kind of blurted it out to a couple people near her in the hall or something at one moment in time. And then, yeah, what, if you have one juror saying that they were influenced, um, I'm sorry. It, it, it's not going to look good at the Supreme Court if they say, yeah. So we have evidence here that uh, a juror was, a juror is flat out telling us. You don't even have to, like, recognize this or have to, like, look in and, and assume or guess were they influenced. One is saying they were. If the Supreme Court says, well, that doesn't matter, uh, that's not a good precedent to set. And here's the deal. Either way on this, a precedent will be set. It will either be, we don't give a shit, even if a juror says they were tampered with, or it will be, uh, yeah, they were tampered with. And you know what that means? a new trial. Take Alec Murdoch out of the equation. Take the whole thing out of the equation. Say it's just some drug charge or something, something mm -hmm. frivolous. And a juror says they were influenced by the clerk of court. Then that, that requires a new trial. It doesn't matter what the case is, who the case is, how damning the case is. If it can stand up one time on its own merit, it should be able to stand up a second time, quite honestly. 
I, I think, I mean, if if we are going to uphold justice, the way justice was meant to be executed, and I don't mean executed in that way, but this country was built on laws and the constitution and there is a way that we do things. Mm-hmm. And if we're going to start bending and we're going to start looking the other way and going, eh, maybe not this time, that becomes a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's a problem for the future. It's not necessarily a problem for the past, but moving forward, we do look at precedent. And if we've set precedent to look the other way when somebody influences a jury, you know, I, we've got problems. It's so, shitty. Yeah, yeah, you're you're 100 percent right. Remove Alec Murdoch from this entire case. What happened here was wrong. If that's what really happened. Well, and if you have a juror saying that, I think you I mean, that's why we have jurors. If we're going to say we're not only going to take you serious over here, but we're not going to take you serious over there. Well, then why do we have a fucking jury? Exactly. Why are we doing any of this? Why do we spend so much money on trials if it doesn't effing matter? Yeah. Then we should just have the judge decide. And that's how it works. Yeah. Um, and that, But that's not what we do here. In federal court, Murdaugh is challenging his 40 year sentence for financial crimes, arguing it violates his right against cruel and unusual punishment. The sentence was handed down by U.S. District Judge Richard Gurgle, uh, who re- that would be a shitty name to have. Hey, Gurgle. Who rejected- great if you're a dentist. <laughs> Dentist, it's like Crentist as your last name is. It last names of the dentist is Crentist. Yeah, what was that from? That was from a TV show. I don't remember what that's from. Do you know what I'm talking? Does it ring a bell though? No, it doesn't. It's like somebody's making up a story and like uh, it was The Office. It was The Office. Oh, uh, I'm like, one. I'm I'm an outlier. I have not seen The Office. Oh I'm waiting God. to binge it when I've got a ton of time. You need to. Uh, it was, I know. Dwight was uh, making an excuse to not be in the office. And oh, who's the dentist's name? Crentist. Uh, anyway, uh, he, who rejected <laughs> the 17 to 22 year range recommendation by federal guidelines. Murdoch's defense com- uh, uh, compares the sentence to those given to high profile defendants like crypto entrepreneur Sam B- Bankman Freed and uh, Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes, who received 25 and 11 years, respectively. Here's the deal, though, with, with uh, Murtaugh's crimes. And I'm not saying that Sam Brinkman Freed and uh, Elizabeth Holmes are wonderful human beings by any means. I, I'm not. They were doing it more from like a 10,000-foot level. Alec Murtaugh was going into like people's homes that trusted him as an attorney, as a confidant, as someone yeah. that he was representing and fucked people over in a very intimate way. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's creepier and darker and respectively deserves a more strenuous sentence because there's more of a personal aspect to it than a, a CEO that's driving the company into the ground based on lies. This, this is something where he knew people were, were dead. They, did, they were relying on this money to help them and he stole it from them. Well, and he's he's licensed. He went to school to become this attorney. He's revered. He's lifted up. He's we we look to attorneys and don't think that they're going to be thieves and liars. They're supposed to be upstanding citizens and not fucking, you know, traitors and and liars and cheaters. And it's just, you know, they they fall off their pedestal. And it's like, I get that they're human, but. You have a standard you're supposed to be living up to. How dare you? I mean, his crimes literally involve stealing from a quadriplegic man. Oh, God. And children whose parents died in a car crash. So It doesn't get much worse than that. I'm good with gurgle and the sentence that was handed out. It's not cruel and unusual. It's cruel and unusual what you did to these people, Alec, because they're going to be traumatized by your fucking actions for the rest of their lives. Uh, it was a severe breach of trust uh, in sentencing Murdoch. Uh, this is what Judge Gurgle said, stating these people placed all their problems and all their hopes with their lawyer. Federal prosecutors argued that Murdoch waived his right to appeal by signing an agreement when he pled guilty, stating he would only appeal if prosecutors lied or his defense was inadequate. They also noted that it is rare for a court to overturn such a sentence, citing only one relevant case involving a life sentence for passing a $100 bad check. The U.S. Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals in Richmond, Virginia, will hear Murdoch's appeal with a three-judge panel randomly assigned to the case. Murdoch's legal troubles, of course, began 
unraveling in 2021 when he was accused of murdering his wife Maggie and son Paul in their home in Culleton County, and we know the story from there. So, uh, I I honestly think it is just that he gets a new trial. If we're going to follow the rules of our court system, I don't know what else you would do. Yeah, he gets a mulligan, doesn't he? That's a golfing thing. As much as I, I don't want to give him the mulligan, I think he gets the mulligan. Let's be honest. Nothing kills the thrill of a good murder mystery like a commercial for laundry detergent. It's like someone slapping a closed sign on your favorite dive bar. But you're not here for that, are you? You're here for the good stuff. So ditch the ads and upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get your crime straight. No chaser. Commercial free with extended interviews and early access. It's like getting the bartender's special when the bar's already closed. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and drink it all in.